Hello everyone, this is Mario Trenti and today we are going to talk about the PMO of the future or the future of the PMO, trends, methodologies and tools. And before we start, I'd like to introduce myself. I am this one guy here. So I work with PMOs for more than 10 years and I have more than 15 years of experience as project manager. I worked at Brazilian Air Force for almost uh, 12 years and then I founded my own consulting company, Trentin and Partners. Today we are about uh, 30 consultants, we implement PMOs around the world, we deliver training, we also implement uh, PPM software, Project Portfolio Management Software, Enterprise Project Management Software. We are Microsoft Gold Partners and it's a great pleasure to be here with you and talk about some of the trends we see in PMOs around the world. We've been working with uh, companies, organizations, government, NGOs, foundations in Africa, Middle East, Brazil and Europe mainly. All right, so let's go. You're going to have my contact information by the end of this presentation. You have my email, LinkedIn, and feel free to contact me if you need any help or if you need any other uh, further assistance or materials related to these presentations. All right, so when we think about PMOs, what comes to your mind? When we believe we have uh, new trends and we see even different names, agile PMOs, enterprise PMOs, strategic PMOs, all those fancy names we see around the corner and uh, actually when we talk to people that are not familiar with project management do you know what they think about PMOs? That's it. Procedures, templates, bureaucracy, 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 audits and more. Uh, people in the organizations they believe that project management is not helping them project management actually is a barrier, an obstacle, a roadblock that they have to comply with. And so most of the other people, our stakeholders, they are not very happy with project management, neither with PMOs in the organizations. I know that you might be surprised. Uh, we think that uh, we understand actually that PMOs and project management is uh, key to successful strategy implementation. We need proper tools, we need to follow best practices, but also we have to persuade and convince the people the stakeholders that this is helpful otherwise you're going to face a lot of resistance and unfortunately most of the PMOs they really uh, get very bureaucratic so they define procedures templates more templates more reports they request more information and uh, we have to provide value add value and your PMO is going to thrive and by the way, when we think about adding value, did you know that project success rates are decreasing? Yeah. Unfortunately, we have more than 50 years with PMI, the Project Management Institute, and other standards, lots of certifications, and we are not seeing improvement in project success rates. So since we start having the CAUS report and other reports, we see that uh, project success rates, um, they are stable and sometimes even decreasing. And there are a lot of factors related to that. We know that we have more projects than we had in the past. Also that we have uh, more competition for resources, that the world is changing and uh, maybe this combination of factors Despite of the fact that we are improving our project management capabilities, we are not improving that at the same pace at, as the challenges that we face in our organizations. And uh, some people believe that this is to, due to lack of knowledge, lack of training, that uh, you need to create a culture, you need to train more people, you need uh, better people, more qualifications. And I disagree with that. In many organizations we've been working, I know that there are people with uh, MBAs, Master in Business Analysis related to project management, uh, PhDs in project management, 
a lot of people certified PMP, Prince2, other certifications. So the problem we see in the organizations is actually that people cannot apply what they learn. They cannot apply what they know. And this is because the organization is not prepared for that. There are no organizational structures that support project management in most of the organizations. And by the way, software tools are extremely important in increasing maturity. And the organizations are using software tools of 10 years ago. They are using Microsoft Excel 2010, Microsoft Excel 2016. They are using Microsoft Word documents. They don't have proper tools to manage the projects. So lack of knowledge, it does not seem to be a root cause of failure in our projects nowadays. And going back to maturity, uh, increasing project management maturity, what is maturity anyway? Maturity is the level of proficiency that you have in a specific discipline. So maturity in project management means that your organization is proficient in project management. Being proficient in something uh, means that you have the capabilities and uh, you are able to execute those processes or disciplines with little supervision and that you have consistency in your results. So when we think about uh, the maturity models, you're probably familiar with those models. And what we see is that we have level one. So most of the models, this is the Kersner model. But if you have other models such as MMGP and OPM3, P3M3, OPM3, P3O. So they are similar in a way that they have five levels being the first level usually related to ad hoc knowledge or common language. And then you move to common process. So people are following more or less the same processes. Finally, they have a singular methodology that is enforced in the organization and it's followed by the project managers, which uh, enables the organization to create KPIs and provide better analysis, preparation, anticipation, which creates benchmarking. And then you have continuous improvement because there is always room for improvement in your PMO and in your project and portfolio management capabilities. The thing is, to achieve level 3, singular methodology, it is almost impossible if you do not have proper software tools. So people believe that the methodology is the most important aspect, and I know you need methodology, but sometimes we have excellent methodology and they are not supported by the tools. You have the processes, you have prioritization, selection, you have good uh, requirements, you have everything, and then you have to manage your projects using post-it notes large projects, large engineering projects with a thousand people, with a hundred people, people that are geographically dispersed in different locations. So it is not possible to do that. Then you try to use Microsoft Excel, a tool that is not collaborative. You have to share the files, send as an attachment. You don't have any control, version control is not a proper tool. What we're talking about is that in order to move to a singular methodology, you need PPM software, you need EPM software, Enterprise Project Management, Project Portfolio Management. These are not similar to the apps you have in your computer. This is not a, a standalone application. These are platforms. And as a platform, you can create uh, workflows, you have roles, you have security, you have collaboration, you have many more features and capabilities when you start using PPM2. So it's uh, unbelievable that we are in almost 2020, right? And we still see large organizations, we still find large organizations, medium large organizations with uh, very large budgets, million dollar, 10 million dollar, 100 million dollar plus, 
and they do not want to invest a hundred thousand in proper tools. Two hundred thousand, maybe even five hundred thousand. But if you have more than ten million, one million in projects, what's the difference in having ten percent of that invested in capabilities that are going to enable you to be more proficient, to be more mature in project management? So this is what we're going to talk about in this presentation. And by the way, I do not know any professional who does not use professional tools. So sometimes when we talk to organizations, and this is what I'm going to show you, based on research, research from Gartner and from other organizations about uh, trends and uh, what we can expect in the PMO of the future, they always say that technology digital transformation is shaping the way we manage projects, okay? And why is that? Imagine, for example, that you are a professional runner. If you are a professional runner, you don't buy um, any kind of uh, shoes or uh, any kind of, uh, I don't know, hydration, any kind of food. No, if you are a professional, you invest in the best any shoes. If you are a professional, you invest in the best supplements. You invest in the best uh, food, in the best hydration, whatever you have. Why? Because you are a professional. Performance is important to you. If you are a casual runner, you run once in a while, every month or so, only in the weekends, then you can get free shoes. You can eat whatever you want because it's not going to impact your performance. Why is that? Because your performance is already low. So when we think about professional tools, professional project management organizations, in my opinion, it is really unacceptable that an organization that has projects as a profession, so project management is an important piece related to your profit, to our revenue, to our strategy in achieving strategic objectives that you do not use proper tools. It doesn't really make sense. People want to use free tools. And of course, the free tools are not going to provide you the same features and support of the paid tools. And I'm not advocating of a specific tool here, okay? Some people might say, no, you want to try to sell Microsoft PPM to us. And it, this is not about this presentation. You might buy whatever you want, Oracle Primavera, Clarity PPM, Microsoft PPM, as long as it is a PPM tool. PPM tool is an enterprise project management tool, project portfolio tool, a platform. Without this kind of platform, this kind of software, there is no way you are going to achieve better results in your organization. And I'm going to show you that. So keep with me and let's move on. So if you have PPM tools such as this one you're seeing here, you can have your portfolio, you're going to have standard reports, you may enhance collaboration, also, besides collaboration, you will, you're going to find ways to update tasks, use your mobile phone, use a web browser, use desktop version, and uh, this helps in increasing productivity. By the way, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but 20% of the time, on average, is spent searching for information because people search information and they don't have the places they don't have a sharepoint they don't have knowledge management database they search scattered information in emails in uh, shared folders and this is not productive this is not even acceptable in 2020 and uh, let's go to research research says what research says. This is Gartner research from 2018, so it's not as updated, but the hype cycle for project and portfolio management is an excellent study, very deep study, very important knowledge that you should be familiar with. And this hype cycle provides program and portfolio management, leaders guidance 
into maturity and viability of various capabilities and underlying technologies that do not only impact, but also is transforming how projects and programs are delivered. And pay attention to this. On the rise, we have project management bots, artificial intelligence. You have enterprise adaptive, adaptive enterprise. At the peak, business analysis and agile project management. So at the peak means they are start declining. It is not that this is not important. You are going to see certifications and other things that you have here. It is that people are already mature and familiar with project management, with certifications, with agile approaches. Now what is on the rise is technology, digital transformation. And uh, your organization cannot miss that. Do not expect improving your project management success rates if you do not uh, buy to new technology and digital transformation. This is what I'm telling you, and I'm going to show you some more results related to that. Also from Gartner, smart machines should take over most routine PPM work. I'm going to show you a demonstration by the end of this presentation. I'm going to show you the real softwares that we use in our organization and that we see our clients using. And uh, when we say that smart machines to take over most of the routine PPM work, we mean paperwork, okay? Dumb work, in a way. Project, management, project managers spend usually half of their day, 50% with meetings. And the other 50%, they spend creating reports, reports and collecting information. So when do they work? Because half of the time they spend in meetings, the other half they spend collecting information and preparing reports, preparing presentations, PowerPoint slides, Microsoft Excel reports. They work overtime. So they work four hours in meetings, four hours in collecting, in collecting information, providing reports, and then when it's 5 p.m., then you can start working. And that's why project managers are so overwhelmed. They are working from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. because they cannot uh, uh, cope with the tasks they have. And most of those tasks could be automated. And this is what I'm going to show you. So program and portfolio managers must learn to share their roles with smart machines. The first change in PPM professions may be to change themselves. So they are very used to collect information, to call people, to send emails, to prepare reports, to prepare PowerPoint slides, and this is not what is expected from the project portfolio management professional of the future. And when we think about the future, it's not 10 years from now. It is already happening. There are organizations with fully automated process, such as in my organization, in the last two years, we managed almost to double the projects, I'll double the number of the projects, twice as much projects as we had in the two or three years ago with the same number of people, with the same number of project managers. And why is that? That is because we are following what Gartner is saying, not only this year, but maybe two or three years ago. Gartner says again that 80% 80% of today's project management tasks will be eliminated by 2030 as artificial intelligence takes over. So creating meeting minutes, for example, meeting minutes can be created automated using Microsoft Teams, for example. You can record the meetings inside your team. You can also have document sharing, version control. When we think about collecting information, progress in your tasks, percentage complete, you don't have to call anyone. They have mobile apps and they can input the information. Gartner analyst to discuss project management technology trends in this PPM summit. 
Another thing that I wanted to share with you. Gartner predicts three digital business impacts on pre-PM. So digital transformation, as I mentioned to you, is changing the organizations and also is changing how we project managers, we portfolio managers, we PMOs work. And this is very, very impactful. It is time to elevate digital business capabilities across program and portfolio management office. If your team or organization has a mindset that continue with historical, pre-digital, pre-historical status quo will be enough to keep operations going, think again. Think again. The time to elevate enterprise level support and coordination across emerging product, program, portfolio management capabilities for digital business is now. If you don't do it now, actually, if you do it now, you're already late. If you don't do it now, maybe it can even cost your, pro your organization's survival. And another thing that I found very interesting, frankly, Many PPM leaders are facing digital business reality check, says Johan Kopcho, vice president analyst at Gartner. Large historical investments in PPM practices and technologies lack new automation. So in the past, you had to invest $1 million or plus to have project server, any kind of PPM server on premises. You had to buy the computers, you have to buy the infrastructure. It was very time consuming, expensive professionals. Now, in order to meet new automation, efficiency and adaptive approaches required to support digital business, you can have platform as a service. You can have software as a service. And it's not only much more cost effective, less expensive, indeed it's really cheaper, very cheap. And you can pay by subscription and you can start getting the benefits you start using that in a month or so. Of course, you need still to customize that to your methodology. And that's when you are going to need uh, some help in consulting. But it's much less expensive than we had in the past. So my question to you is, has your organization implemented ERP software, SAP, or any ERP software? I bet you have an ERP software. It is totally unacceptable that you have a medium or large organization and sometimes even small organizations without ERP. Imagine that you manage your organization, large organization with Excel spreadsheets. You get all the invoices and then you get uh, information from your bank accounts and everything. If you have any typos, everything uh, goes wrong. If you delete a cell, if you have any problem in a formula, if you corrupt the file, so that's a nightmare. And organizations do not do that. In order to thrive in operations, in order to be financially successful, they implement ERP software. Another question to you. Has your organization implemented CRM, Customer Relationship Management Software, or CRM platform, such as Salesforce or other platforms? I bet you have. If you're small, Maybe not, but even the small organizations are adopting CRM software, sometimes less expensive CRM software. But medium and large organizations, in order to compete in the extremely competitive market we have, they implement CRM software. Imagine again, you go to an Excel spreadsheet and you input your client information. You input email information, telephone from your client, very long spreadsheets with 3,000 clients, 5,000 clients, 500 clients. That is a nightmare. You corrupt the file, you cannot share, you cannot have logins, who changed that, who deleted, and whatever this information. So if you have ERP software in your organization, and you have CRM software in your organization. In project management, something important in your organization, 
why don't you implement PPM software? This is the question I ask to many executives and every time I ask, I ask the question, I get, uh, I don't know, those surprise faces, you know, those surprise faces and uh, they don't have an answer to that. And by the end of the meeting, they go to the PMO, they go to IT department, and they create a task force, a task team to analyze different solutions you have in the market. I'm not giving you a solution here, but they start analyzing PPM software. They start analyzing uh, collaboration platforms, communication platforms, knowledge management platforms. Because project management is something important to our organizations. We already know that. You invest more in training and in getting PMP certification than you invest in software. And all that investment you have in the people, all that investment you have in the processes is useless if it is not supported by proper tools. So the most important trend that I would like to share with you here is that digital transformation and technology are really transforming the way we manage projects. The project management project manager in the future and the PMO in the future, they had to be very highly skilled in the technologies, in collaboration tools, communication tools, scheduling tools, uh, PPM tools, and this is very important. Imagine, for example, that you have 50 project managers and you invest in, PP, in PMP certification, $500. So you have here $25,000. And uh, then you provide training to these people annually. So let's say $1,000 per training. You have 50 more, 50K. You invest 100,000 a year if you have 50 project managers. You also have their salaries. I'm not even talking about their salaries. 5,000, 10,000 uh, plus salaries for your project managers. And then what are the tools you give to these very skilled project managers? You give Microsoft Excel 2016. So this is something definitely you have to rethink, right? All right, uh, the question I get sometimes is, can we manage projects without software? I have uh, some friends and uh, they advocate that uh, methodology is the most important piece. And I understand that methodology is extremely important. We always define methodology and we custom methodologies. When we implement PMOs around the world, I'm very careful in doing process modeling, mind maps, in uh, gathering the requirements, in using proper business analysis tools so that we create a methodology that is really tailored to the organization's needs. But if you don't have the software supporting that, what's the point? We can manage the projects without software. And this is a great example. If you watch this movie, Hidden Figures, it is on Netflix, you are going to see that uh, you could send the man to the moon without Microsoft Project, without Oracle Primavera, without Clarity PPM. You could. It's just that you needed 10 years and thousands of people full-time dedicated to that. We don't have full-time people dedicated anymore. Our professionals are part-time. We need capacity management. We need capacity planning across the projects. We need capacity planning at portfolio level, at program level. You don't have 10 years anymore. You have to uh, short your, your time to market uh, and nowadays it's really fast and changes. So if you watch this movie, you see there is a guy with this blackboard and they create the, let's say, major calculations you need. Then he distribute the calculation for each people in their desks. They do it by hand each of the pieces and then they send to this guy and he consolidates that. It's very, very, very time consuming. Nowadays, you use computers, you use uh, calculators, scientific calculators, you use simulations with MATLAB and other simulators. So you can calculate orbits with uh, 
higher precision in much, much, much less time. So it's a paradigm shift. We're thinking now that we have tools that allow us to create self-driving projects. In the past, what we had was centralized command and control. So in the command and control, people were collocated in the same place. I could create a schedule in the wall. I could put post-it notes in the wall. Everybody will be collocated in the same room. Once they know their tasks, then they get the task and they go to execute and they come back and update the board. This is not how organizations uh, work anymore. We have flat organizations. We have fewer uh, hierarchy levels. And we expect that decentralization and distributed management, even peer-to-peer -peer management, happens in our organization. So sometimes you have a product manager, for example, or you have any person in the organization and they get an assignment. You have to plan for the final, the end of the year event in your organization. And you gather your peers, you gather your team and you have to organize that. So this is a paradigm shift. And uh, you don't need the tools we had in the past. You have new tools for that, such as Microsoft Planner, and other Kanban boards. Uh, this is a very quick start and easy to use software. You just create a new, pro a new project here and then you add the people. So you create and it's fully integrated with your emails, with your calendar. You have your work organized into different project plans, different teams. You have interactive boards where you have the buckets and you have the tasks, and you can even include files and other information that are attached. And these files and information, they are shared using, using version control. You build your team, customize the columns and visual and engaging. And on top of that, you're not going to imagine, but we have mobile web for that. You can see all of this in your mobile phone so that you can add more tasks, you can complete tasks, you can open the files in your mobile phone. So if you're not familiar with Microsoft Planner, go check that out, uh, search on YouTube, you're going to find uh, plenty of videos and also tutorials related to Microsoft Planner this is a fantastic tool to help you in agile project management. And we also can combine Microsoft Planner with Microsoft Projects so that you get the benefits not only of traditional project management, uh, the Gantt charts, the famous Gantt charts we have, but also hybrid approach to project management. And in this hybrid approach to project management, what you can do is that you are going to be able to not only use the Gantt chart, but also combine the Gantt chart with these Kanban boards. Another fantastic collaboration tool. We have Microsoft Teams, which is a central hub for collaboration. And here you're going to see the login and I'm going to show you how it works. We have plenty of chatbots. Remember that project management bots are a trend. So you can have chatbots. Who is a chatbot, for example? I'm showing you here another chatbot, Freshdesk, which is a service desk. We have a chatbot for Microsoft Planner, where you receive insights related to your tasks and to the teams you are working with. By the way, you can create project teams as we do here, and you can include other information such as Power BI dashboards. Every time you access your project, you are going to have an updated report right in your pocket. You can do it on desktop, you can do it on web, you can do it on the mobile app. And uh, also, you can include Microsoft PPM inside Microsoft Teams. I can have my schedule, my other information, my project site, documents, and everything 
controlled in a specific team. So nowadays we see in the organizations Microsoft Teams and some of the organizations adopted Microsoft 365 and they don't know how to use Microsoft Teams. I've been teaching people on how to use and best practices in adopting Microsoft Teams, Microsoft SharePoint, Microsoft Office 365. And it's amazing, you're not going even to believe that, but 90% of the organizations and the users who buy Microsoft 365, they use only Outlook. They buy and they use only emails. They have SharePoint available, they have Teams, they have Planner, they have Power Platform, Power Apps, they have Microsoft Flow. Why not explore those new tools? Remember, we are in the digital transformation age. You have to be uh, familiar with that, prepared with that. So the next step is implementing PPM software your next step. You have to consider that and also take into consideration not only PPM software, but other collaboration tools and productivity platforms. Well, here you have a couple of suggested videos and I'm going to share the, this presentation with you as well. You can find more videos on YouTube and search tutorials related to Microsoft Planner, to Microsoft Teams and to other tools as I mentioned here. You have my contact information, but uh, do not go away. I'm going to show you how these uh, software tools work. We have a demo here that I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you only five seconds so that you can capture this screen. And uh, if you need anything from me, let me know. This is my email and you have my LinkedIn. You can send uh, any comments, any needs that you have. I'll be very happy to share case studies, best practices about these tools, PMO implementations, trends and whatever you need. OK, so here you have my information. I'm going to shift here so that we go to the demo. Here's the demo. And uh, as I was talking about uh, the methodologies, we see many organizations using Microsoft Excel, as I mentioned to you. These are examples of Microsoft Excel plans, okay? This one is in Portuguese and it's a project management plan where you have a scope and then you have the schedule and everything. Each of the different tabs, you have a specific plan, which is not bad. You have a great methodology. But the thing is, when you have uh, one project, three projects, that's okay. When you have 10 projects, imagine managing a schedule with 200 tasks in Microsoft Excel. Imagine if you have 10 projects, 20 projects, how you're going to identify capacity, people working in different uh, stages of the life cycle. So although this is a great template, it is not something that is going to help your organization in moving to the next level concerning project management maturity, project management uh, success rates, project management proficiency. We have here another great template, a template that I helped develop in the project managers without borders. And then you have the methodology, business case, project charter, and so on. Each of these is a different tab. And it's a great template, again, it's a great methodology to start as a starting point. Sometimes we use Excel-based methodologies as prototyping. And once you have that, then you move to PPM software. This is my PPM software and all our projects are here. As we create uh, new project proposals, we already have the schedule here and we can manage everything related to that project. I'm going to show you a demo environment where we have not only the projects, here you can see the projects, okay. Here you have the projects and you have different project types. You have workflows. I know that maybe you are seeing it so in Portuguese. This is the demo version we created in Portuguese. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have any updated access to the implementations we have in other clients in English because uh, in our clients, they are proprietary, so we cannot show the 
PPM environment. And then this is one that I created here for my students, my MBA students, and that's why it is in Portuguese. So we have project types. Probably you are familiar at least with the interface. And you can have forms. So if I'm going to create a new project, I can do portfolio selection and prioritization as well here. And what I'd like to show you is that we can create great reports. So these are Power BI reports, getting information from Microsoft PPM, real-time self-service BI. So if I update any of the new project proposals, this uh, report is related to project proposals. I have 31 project proposals, 4 million, and I can see each of the departments, uh, how much money they have in projects, for example. If I have any new project right now in Microsoft PPM, I'll see here in my report. Another interesting report is related to ongoing projects, the projects that are, being, uh, that are in the execution phase. And I can have a project by types, project by categories, very interesting reports that you can create. These are projects uh, that are how they are performing according to schedule, according to budget, according to work. And you can just click and also uh, get the information, try to combine the filters and you're going to find whatever you want here. So these are some examples, capacity planning, resources, the use of resources, how many resources I have, how many hours I have available, um, how many resources do I need, and you can do it whatever you want with these reports, and it's really interesting. And you might be considering, I have all these reports, do I have to open all these tabs? No, that's when you have the collaboration tool. So this is Microsoft Teams, and actually this is the Microsoft Teams we use in my organization. We have different teams, as you can see here, admin, finance, and other information related to the activities. And I'm showing you an example of project here. We have all the project files, then we have the project uh, website, this is Microsoft PPM embedded in Microsoft Teams. Very, very nice. So I'm going to expand this, this window and you can see the project schedule is here. And if I want to update any tasks, if I want to change anything, if I want to uh, upload documentation, it is inside Microsoft Teams. I embedded Microsoft PPM project website here. And also, I have the reports. So if I want the reports from my, my project, I just click on this tab and I have the one page report related to this specific project. So how many tasks, milestones, how am I doing related to the schedule? How am I doing related to whatever other information we have in my project? So as a project team, I just have to click in the project and I have all the information I want here. So this is what I wanted to share with you. Just a couple of thoughts related to trends. I hope you like this presentation and also that you go get more information about collaboration tools, about productivity tools, productivity platforms such as Microsoft Office 365. So also, find PPM software, EPM software suitable to your organization. And if you are facing challenges related to digital transformation, to business process automation, and to any of these that I explained in this presentation, let me know. We'd be glad to help you. I can send you more case studies. I, can, uh, I also like to receive any thoughts or any comments you have. If you were struggling with this very difficult challenge in moving your organization to the digital transformation, in this digital transformation journey, let me know and I'll be very glad to help you. I'll put my, my information here once again. It was a great pleasure. Thank you for your attention. Let me know your thoughts. Send me your email. Connect on LinkedIn and it will be a great pleasure to see you uh, next time.